This is video 6 of the Introduction to Mindfulness-Based Ecotherapy course. In this video, we're going to be talking about Session 4 of the Mindfulness-Based Ecotherapy program. The Session 4 skill is letting go. In previous videos, we talked about the idea of radical acceptance. Radical acceptance can best be described as the art of letting go. Once you've done everything in your power to solve a problem, you've done all you can. So at that point, worry and stress are just counterproductive. Letting go of the stress and anxiety doesn't necessarily mean letting go of the problem itself. Here's an example. Suppose you have a car payment coming up and you don't have the money to pay it. This would naturally cause you anxiety. But if after brainstorming solutions you find you still don't have any money to pay the car payment, then at that point you've done everything you can do. So at that point, you let go of the anxiety associated with the problem. This doesn't mean that you let go of the car payment. You'll make the payment when you can. Letting go just means that you don't worry about the car payment. You let go of the anxiety associated with the car payment. The energy you could have used worrying about the situation could be put to better use by trying to come up with a solution to the situation. So in session 4.0 of the session 4, Letting Go, we talk about the bare necessities. And in that, we have an exercise called wants versus needs. The more we're able to let go of things, especially things that trouble us, the more peace and freedom we're able to create for ourselves. Think about this for a moment. The only true needs that any human being has is food, clothing, shelter, and love. And in some environments, you might not even need the clothing and the shelter. So what do we really need in life? And how do we distinguish our needs from our wants? In section 4.0 of Letting Go, we have an exercise called Wants versus Needs. And the idea of that exercise is to have your students list their wants and distinguish them from their needs. How many things do you need and how many things are just wants? In section 4.1, we talk about Alone in the Woods. And that starts off with a quote from Henry David Thoreau from Walden. Do not trouble yourself much to get new things, whether clothes or friends. Turn the old, return to them. Things do not change, we change. Sell your clothes and keep your thoughts. So in section 4.1, we are processing the wants versus needs exercise. The purpose of that is to demonstrate just how little we actually need in life in order to live a contented existence. A lot of times, especially in the United States or in capitalistic cultures, we define ourselves by what we own rather than what we are. And the idea of this wants versus needs exercise is to get more in touch with that true self by letting us figure out who we are as opposed to identifying ourselves through what we own. In section 4.2 of Letting Go, we talk about the seesaw. If you've ever seen children playing on a seesaw, you realize that if one gets off, the other one can't play. And relationship interactions are like that. If you find yourself in a disagreement with someone and there's no resolution in sight, it's as if you and your partner are playing on a seesaw. If you find yourselves going up and down, back and forth with no end in sight, then it's time to get off of the seesaw. So how do you do that? The key to getting off of the seesaw is to meet your partner's high energy attacks with a low energy response in a calm and quiet manner. So in other words, the more agitated the person you're talking to gets, the calmer you get. That takes practice, but it can be done. The uh, basic idea here is going back to that mindful skill of intention. And remember, the questions of intention are, number one, what am I trying to accomplish in this situation? And number two, does what I'm about to do or say reflect that intention? So, for example, if it's my intention to have a happy relationship with this person, but I'm always arguing and fighting with them, does my behavior match my intention? So can I seek a low energy path, a calmer path to resolve the situation? A simpler way of putting it is, is it more important to be right or is it more important to be happy in this relationship? And uh, part of the material from this section of the book is 
from a study by Barnes in 2007, and this study found that mindfulness helps couples to respond better to each other and to reduce relationship stress. And the name of that study is The Role of Mindfulness in Romantic Relationship Satisfaction and Responses to Relationship Stress. Section 4.3 talks about the idea of simplifying. Mindfulness teaches us to slow down and focus on one thing at a time. The mindfulness of ecotherapy teaches us that we can slow down our lifestyles as well. If we savor every moment, then we don't have to fill those moments up with an endless stream of meaningless possessions. The more we can simplify our lives by eliminating the unnecessary clutter, the more we can practice the art of letting go. So the basic idea in this section is think about all the things you own. Think about all the possessions you have. And think about how much time you spend either taking care of those possessions or earning the money to maintain them or earning the money to buy more possessions. If you could really simplify your life to the bare necessities, how much free time would you have then? You wouldn't have to work as much to earn money to maintain all of these things, all of these possessions. You wouldn't have to work as much to buy all these possessions. So by simplifying, you free up your life to have more time, and that means you enjoy more quality of life. In section 4.4, we talk about change as inevitability. The old saying is that uh, this too shall pass. When change happens, we can accept it and go with the flow, or we can fight it and put ourselves in misery. And this gets to the idea of something called experiential avoidance. Experiential avoidance is our attempt to avoid unpleasant experiences. Mindfulness teaches us to move into being mode out of doing mode. When you're in doing mode, you're doing something to try to solve the problem. So if you're having an unpleasant emotion, for example, you might be doing something to try to avoid it by keeping yourself busy, keeping yourself occupied, telling yourself not to think about it, that sort of thing. If you shift into being mode, what you're doing is you're acknowledging that unpleasant emotion, that unpleasant thought, that unpleasant feeling, but you're allowing some space around it to allow yourself to experience it without realizing or feeling that you have to respond to it in any way whatsoever. Thoughts and feelings are just that. They're not who you are. They're just things that your brain does. And coming to that realization is one of the skills of letting go. In section 4.5 of session 4, the title of that session is Everything Changes, Ride the Wave. I used to work with a lot of people who had addictive behaviors. And one of the things with the addiction is that when a craving strikes, it feels like that craving is never going to go away until you do something about it. And that's when people usually break down, fall off the wagon, and indulge in their substance abuse again. But if you picture it as a wave, you know that cravings come and go. There are times when you're not craving, and there are times when you are craving. So riding the wave means... Just sit in the moment, shift into being mode with that craving and say to yourself, this will pass. Change is inevitable. This will go away. And then you just check in moment to moment. Is the craving still there? Yes, it's still there. Okay, I'll sit with it a little longer. Is the craving still there? Yes, it's still there, but it's subsiding a little bit. Okay, I'll sit with it a little longer. And as you do that, you wait for the wave to crest and trough. And when it goes back into that trough, then the craving goes away. And part of this information comes from commentary on mindfulness and metaphor in relapse prevention uh, by Alan Marlott. But the idea behind that is that you know from experience that cravings will subside. And you don't have to have a problem with substance addiction to have a craving. We talk about process addiction and mindfulness-based ecotherapy. What a process addiction is, is just what it sounds like, addiction to a process. That could be some sort of emotional process, like arguing or getting angry over things, that sort of thing. Or it could be a food addiction, where you are a comfort eater, and you eat food because you're managing your emotions that way. So the basic idea behind this is a craving could be the result of an emotional response to something. And 
If you're in being mode, you don't have to respond to the emotion. You can just sit with it quietly and be with it. In section 4.6, we talk about mindful openness or mindfully letting go. It's important to note that letting go doesn't mean we pretend that the problem doesn't exist. The idea isn't to ignore the problem or even to try to make the problem go away. The idea is to consciously observe and describe the problem using those mindfulness skills while choosing not to buy into the anxiety it generates. We're not letting go of the problem, we're letting go of the anxiety. When you learn to do this, you have mastered the art of letting go. And the study that's pertinent there for this section is a 2009 study by Corden, The Role of Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction in Perceived Stress. And that concludes Session 4, Letting Go. Next, we'll go over Session 5 in the next video.